Welcome back. If you just joined us, our guest on this episode of Question Time is the Executive Secretary of the Nigeria Shippers Council. Hassan Bello is our guest. Don't go away. But even the, uh, the, the progressive shipping charges are not even enough to deter the shippers. So what are you doing well, to create an effective the, solution the, to this? Yes, that's what we are looking at. One of the effective solutions is actually for the terminals to publish their charges. Let everybody know that when you bring goods, you have the charges so that people will make you know, uh, plans. Uh, most of the charges are not published, uh, are not known. So that's what we are going to talk with the terminals. Publish your charges so that people will know the uh, consequences you know, of making the ports you know, a storage facility. And that's why we have the updock terminals. You know, uh, we are talking with updock terminals operators also to see how their you know, uh, uh, infrastructure or uh, where could be used you know, to bring cargo there so people will be able to take their cargo home. What are you doing about the poor access road in terms of um, leading to the ports? It is a, it's a simple problem. The port must be connected with many modes of transport, especially the rail. Here in Nigeria, it is predominantly the road. You know, we could link the port with the rail, with the road, with, uh, with uh, 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 inland waterways, and also pipeline. These are most of uh, transport. But we have carried out a study, you know, and what we discovered was uh, shocking. You know, in, at every moment, you know, along the Apapa or Relay uh, logistic ring, there are about 5,500 trucks almost every day. But what the port needs or what is needed is maybe 1,500 trucks. So what are the 3,000 trucks doing? Because they have no business at the ports. Trucks are also are only needed when they are called to do something at the port. So what we have is uh, absence of effective modern traffic control, you know, on the Apapa uh, uh, Tinken, you know, uh, ports. And um, very soon we'll have uh, started uh, the Ministry of Transport, Nigerian Shippers Council, and Nigerian Ports Authority have started, you know, talking with. Uh, Nafith, which is a company supported by uh, IFC of the World Bank, you know, to look at the whole structure and introduce electronic gating, uh, staging, you know, of, uh, uh, of uh, cargo, of trailers, so that they will have access to the port or to Apapa only when you have business to, uh, to conduct. So I think this will really mitigate, you know, the problem. When you talk of... Um this port congestion. Now, we understand that the World Bank is partnering and assisting through by investing $40 million. Do we really need $40 we need million dollars to fix port congestion? We need a modern traffic system. Um, that, that is not uh, you know, entirely correct. We are always looking you know, for a solution. Um, the uh, $40 million you are talking about you know, is not, you know, uh, uh, it's not actually you know, arrived at. But we are talking about acquisition of you know, land, about three, very vast land where uh, we have truck parks, you know, uh, stages of parks where they are nearer you know, to the port and they are also cold and they are modern. Uh, you don't, you know, you slot an electronic you know, pass and it opens the, you know, the gate for you. But the congestion in Apapa is more than uh, the road, the condition of the road. Actually, it's lack of you know, traffic management. And uh, every port in the world now will be served, will be better served by uh, this traffic uh, management system. So uh, these are, there are talks going on. And um, if these are successful, then we'll have a one and a half year old, a one and a half year you know, plan to ensure that you know, this congestion will not be experienced. And we hope it will be repeated, you know, or, uh, repeated in other areas where we have ports. But on the contrary, we have reports that many of these truck owners are very influential, more like a sacred cow, yes, and yes. the Nigeria Shippers Council can't control them. Well, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not true. Nobody is, there's nothing that is influential. I've, we have met with a lot of truck owners, and they are individuals like you and me, you know, actually. You know, so it is, it's just a myth, you know. We are introducing reforms you know, and these reforms come, you know, with adjustments. And um, 
I'm so happy that we have been able to talk with all the association of truck owners uh, and they are buying into this, you know, modernization. Because something with the reforms is if you don't fit in, then you see yourself outside the, the scheme of things. How far have you gone in securing a national fleet? Um, a lot has been achieved since the idea of the national fleet. Uh, and um, I think we are at the financials now. Uh, and soon all this thing will materialize in having a Nigerian flagship. But what is even more important is the uh, role of the private sector. Because having national fleet is private sector driven. The government will not invest a couple in this, but the government is an enabler, it's a catalyst. It will provide conducive atmosphere for our uh, people to own ships and operate them because of many advantages, chief of which is uh, earnings from freight, employment of our, of our youth, and the ability to control the, the trade terms. Now, you've talked about insurance in part of your reforms now. Um, there's a news making around that insurance firms have placed a premium of 2.3 trillion naira on Nigerian bound vessels. So, what do you make of this? Yes, you know, a lot of insurance there. You know, if uh, the, uh, apart from cargo insurance, there's haul and machinery. And that's why we are calling for uh, introduction of Nigerian, you know, P&I clubs. You know, the involvement of Nigerian uh, uh, companies, you know, insurance and banks, you know, in this issue of national fleet. If we have uh, strong Nigerian insurance companies who then come in together, you know, then they will be able to uh, insure, you know, the cargo. It's a gradual thing, but it's going to happen. So that we have, you know, the impact of shipping also on our financial you know, uh, uh, institutions. Before we wind down this conversation now, you raised the issue of capital flight. And yes, indeed, lots of capital flight in Nigeria's shipping sector. Uh, we have a situation where many of the ship owners take their ship abroad for dry docking and thereby a lot of foreign exchanges lost. So what are you doing to boost our own ship repair capacity? Really? Yes, that's what we are talking about. You know, because having national fleet we have to make it sustainable. And this means having ship repair yards, and we are talking with so many people. We have to have support. We have to have the crewing. You know, there must be Nigerians who will crew our, our ships, so they have to be properly trained. We have to have the uh, ship registry that is responsive, you know, to the modern needs. And so we have to have, you know, uh, uh, associated, you know, industries. Because of what use is having of having national fleet when you, as you said, take it to Singapore for repair. We need to have it here. So while we are talking about national fleet, we also have to consider so many things that will make the national fleet sustainable. The Executive Secretary in Nigeria's Shippers Council, Hassan Bello, thank you for making our time to be part of this episode of Question Time. Thank we you. should the very best of luck. Pleasure. Now, with so much anxiety about diversion of cargoes to neighboring countries, how can the federal government make Nigeria an attractive port destination? Also, lots of foreign exchange is lost through dry docking and ship repairs abroad. These are areas the government needs to address urgently. So you may send us a comment about the federal government's reform in the shipping sector. Here is our social media platforms for you to participate in this conversation. And that's it on this episode of Question Time from Channels Television. Join us next week on another exciting episode. Many thanks for watching. I'm Benga Ashiro. Bye for now.